There is a brilliant resource for learning vocabulary that I always recommend to my students. And normally I recommend it as a mobile app that you can use on your commute to learn new words. I used it en route to my 340 to learn new vocabulary. But I just realized you can use it as a website as well and do it from your laptop. And that's what I thought I'd do today, starting with the advanced level, just because that's who I am. I want to do advanced vocabulary. That's what makes me uh, get up in the morning. So I thought I'd do a video covering advanced level one Magouche vocabulary. And any new words that we learn, we're going to flick over to mnemonicdictionary.com and think of a way of memorizing those words so they stay in our vocabulary. It's no point just writing the definition in your word list. You have to think of a way to memorize the word so it sticks. So that's what we're going to do today. Hopefully you can learn at least 10 new words and you never know, I might learn quite a few words too. So let's get started with advanced level one. You of course can start wherever you like. There are, I believe over a thousand words in this app. Here we go. The first word is truculent, which I think means aggressive, brutal, really kind of like belligerent. Truculent is belligerent, aggressive. Fierce, savage. She became progressively truculent. So they give you a sentence that has the word in context. Fierce, savage, aggressive. That's how I would remember that word. Another way, I don't need mnemonic dictionary for this one because I would say truculent sounds like truck, like a truck whizzing down the motorway. Incredibly dangerous to crash into. Aggressive, like a truck, truculent, fierce, savage. So I would say I knew that word. Loading next word, base. Now, of course, you might know that base means like an army base where people gather together, but it also means evil and brutal. And that's the definition I'm guessing they're gonna go with here. So base, a secondary or tertiary definition, means to be really kind of corrupt and evil, savage almost, a bit like truculent. Let's see if that's the definition they went with. Yeah, the lowest without any moral principles. You are truly base. You have no principles. Some of us might be able to think of politicians that applies to, but there we go, base. How to remember that? I guess the basement is the lowest level. So someone whose base is at the lowest level of morality. There you go, I just made that up. Okay. Kowtow. I just about know that. It means to go along with, be subservient, submissive. I just kowtowed to the king's plans. I believe it might even come from the Chinese language, Mandarin, which I studied for a while in China, but I'm not entirely sure. It could be Japanese. Anyway, kowtow. To bow or act in a subservient manner. You keep kowtowing to the boss. Why do you do that? Attenuate, to make thin or weak. Have you heard of the word tenuous? It means like a really weak link, a really weak claim. To make weak and thin. To weaken, to taper off, become thinner. So far, so good. Of course, there may well be words in this 50 that I don't know. Um, my vocabulary is definitely not perfect, but I'm just hoping that you're remembering words and that you're using a mnemonic or a way of remembering the word so it sticks. Sedulous. I am not 100% sure on this. I think it means very careful and attentive to detail and hardworking, but let's check. Done diligently and carefully. So not really hardworking maybe, more just done carefully, scrupulously, meticulously. Not sure how you'd remember that. So let's go to mnemonic dictionary and go sedulous. And how can we remember that that means careful and persistent? Okay, there you go. Someone said to seduce a woman, man needs to be diligent and persistent. It's one way of remembering it. Sedulous. Okay, not all of these ways of remembering it are that great. But anything that helps you to remember the definition is great. Sedulous, 
marked by care and persistent effort. To defray, I think it means to offset. The only context I ever hear that word is, she needed to defray her costs. I think it means offset or put off, but let's find out. To help pay the cost of, either in part or in full. So this person's uncle helped defray the excessive tuition with a monthly donation. So it just helps to pay off in part. She defrayed her loan by getting her dad's help or something. Defray. I guess you could think of it, it's not the full amount, you've frayed the amount. You've thinned it down, you've defrayed it. To help pay the cost of something in part or in full. You don't see that word very often, to be honest. Caloric. Interesting. Ooh, it's just at the tip of my vocabulary. I think it means angry, full of cholera. Cholera is, of course, a disease, but back in the day, they used to think it was a humour that affected the body. And I believe it caused um, anger, not sadness. That's melancholy. But let's go with anger. There we go. Prone to outbursts of anger, easily angered, caloric, almost like full of cholera, full of that disease that makes you angry. Obviously, cholera doesn't do that for real, but caloric was what they used to believe caused cholera. So caloric means to be full of anger, full of those humours of anger. Anathema, completely the opposite of, the nemesis of, the enemy of. Doing hard work is the anathema of laziness. That's how I would understand it. Interesting, a detested person, the source of somebody's hate. Anathema, it's not quite what I said. Detested, someone who you hate. I did say nemesis and enemy. Obviously, a way to remember that is the emma at the end almost sounds like enemy. I, I thought it also meant the opposite of, the source of someone's hate. Hmm, interesting, let's check anathema in mnemonic dictionary. And what do we have with my supposedly super fast internet? which I'm promised, but it's not actually that fast. A detested person. Interesting, so it doesn't necessarily mean the opposite. A detested person, you are anathema. So you are like a really hated individual. That's interesting, isn't it? Sometimes you think you know a definition of a word, but it's subtly different to what you thought it meant. So I knew anathema meant an enemy, a nemesis, but I also thought it meant the opposite of something. Turns out it just means an enemy, the source of your hate, someone that you hate, that you detest. There we go. Arrant, I believe means arrogant or like someone who goes off and does what they want. You often hear the, well, you don't often hear it, but I've heard the insult, you arrant knave. Does that mean arrogant or just reckless? It's definitely an insult. Kind of like you can think of the word rant. Let's see. Complete and holy, I did not know that word. So an arrant knave, you're a complete knave. An arrant fool, you're a complete fool. Never knew that. So arrant is just an emphasizer. You are complete and holy, this thing. And usually with a negative connotation, usually as part of an insult. I did not know that word. How to remember it? Well, again, I would probably go to Mnemonic Dictionary, an arrant, means, sounds like error, you, the less qualified, the more errors you make. Arrant, arrogant, mm, not great. So you might have to think of your own way. I guess if you're doing a rant, you add an emphasizer. You're an arrant X. I really think you're an X. Okay, Byzantine, fun word, comes from the Byzantines who are based around what is modern day Istanbul. It means complex, labyrinthine, hard to understand, full of intricacies. Intricate and complex, Byzantine, like the Byzantine Empire. I don't know why it was named after them. That'd be an interesting one to look up one day. But yeah, Byzantine means complex and intricate. Ponderous. You take too long, you're too slow, you ponder too much. 
To ponder is to think. If someone thinks too much, they're ponderous. They take too much time. Some people could accuse me of being ponderous. Way down, moving slowly, ponderous. Fractious. It means splitting apart, never acting as a group. You can think of the word fraction. It means to split something apart. So fractious, you, you form into factions. You split apart, you don't act as one. Likely to cause disruption. Irritable, I didn't actually quite emphasize the irritability. So let's see what mnemonic dictionary says. Fractious means, again, with my supposedly super fast internet, but actually taking too long. Stubbornly resistant to control, yet always splitting apart. That's closer to what I, I thought. Yeah, doesn't submit to control. But it also means, interestingly, easily irritated or annoyed, like irritable, peevish, tetchy. Interesting, I didn't know the secondary definition. Easily irritated or annoyed. I didn't know that. Then we've even got a third definition here. Unpredictable, difficult in operation, likely to be troublesome. Okay, interesting. And there's, again, many different ways of remembering that. Okay. I would go to say I knew that word, but I obviously didn't know some of the secondary definitions in detail. Factious. That's interesting. Factious, I would have thought, meant going into factions. So again, similar to fractious, right? You form into different factions. You don't act as one. Hmm. So fractious and factious, what would the definitions be in their differences? Yeah, internal dissension. So produced by or characterized by internal dissension. So not agreeing, forming into factions. So it makes you wonder what's the real difference. If fractious means unpredictable, hard to control, resistant to authority, but then it also means easily irritated, I guess. Nadir, that's the lowest point. Your highest point is your zenith. He was at the zenith of his control, at the zenith of his industry. Nadir is the lowest point. He was at the nadir of his life. The sun had reached its nadir, its lowest point. Perfunctory means very functional. Some people think it might mean doing something perfectly, but it's kind of the opposite. You just do it functionally. You get it done, but you don't really do it in any impressive or special way. Kind of functional, you can remember it like that. Done routinely and with little interest or care, perfunctory. Cherry, that I gotta be honest, I think it means being irritated, but I'm not at all sure. Cherry, being like resistant to something, but I'm not at all sure. Okay, I just about got that one. Cautious, reluctant to do something. He was cherry of the routines he'd been set. He was cherry of his new job. Okay, let's see if we can think of a way to remember that. Characterized by great caution, wary. There we go. Cherry rhymes with wary. Very wary of doing something. That's a brilliant way of remembering it. Cherry sounds similar to wary. I'm gonna select as I didn't know the word, just so I can practice it again, even though I just about knew it, but I would say I didn't know it. Conciliate, I believe means to mediate, kind of like the word reconcile, to conciliate between two parties, to bring back together, let's see if that's right, to make peace with, yes, to conciliate. Zeitgeist, I believe it's a German word meaning the spirit, most commonly used as the spirit of the era, the zeitgeist of 2019. What's that thing that captures the spirit? Has that painting captured the zeitgeist of the modern era? I believe the German word is ghost, geist. So it's kind of like the spirit, the ghost of this particular era. Does it capture that zeitgeist? You know, there might be a particular musician 
or TV show that just captures an era in one product. So that's what zeitgeist means. The spirit of the time. Precipitate means to make something happen. Kicking that tree precipitated the snow falling down. People might think of precipitation being like snow and rain, but to precipitate, it comes before, that's the pre, something happens. Something that triggers something else to happen. To precipitate something. To cause to happen is the one definition I've got here. But also, right, of course, so another definition of precipitate is, you, you pronounce it a bit differently, but instead of precipitate, that's the verb, you would say that's a bit precipitate. It's hasty, it's rash, you're doing it too fast. You pronounce the words differently. Oh, he's a bit precipitate. He's a bit hasty, a bit rash. But to precipitate, that's to cause something to happen. Very interesting. Catholic. Of course, it's the denomination of Christianity, Catholic and Protestant. But it also means, and I don't think many people know this, it means the entirety of something. So you might say the Catholic Church. But it's, if you don't use the capital C, you're not just saying, oh, that part of the church is Catholic. You mean like the entire thing. That's my understanding of broad scope, universal. His interests in music are Catholic. Again, small c, meaning universal, the entire thing. He likes everything. Capital C would be the denomination of Christianity. Lascivious means lustful, lecherous lascivious. I'm not sure how you'd remember that. I guess it, a lot of words do with lust have L and S in, don't they? Lustful, lecherous, lascivious. Overweening. You often hear the insult, overweening pride. I think it means exaggerated, overcoming itself. Just too much, over the top. But I'm not, I'm not 100% on the exact definition. Yeah, arrogant, presumptuous. Okay, I didn't quite get that. I just said it was over the top. Overweening pride I did get, but what quite the overweening bit means, it means arrogant, presumptuous. So I'm gonna go ahead and say I didn't know that word, overweening. They're gonna test me again on the words I didn't know. Indigent, ooh, I believe means lazy. They just don't do anything, they're indigent, they're wasteful, but let's check it out. Okay, no, not quite wasteful or lazy, poor, just not having very much. So again, that's another word I didn't know. Indigent means poor, having very little. Arrant, so it's testing me again on the words I didn't know. Arrant meant truly, or it's like an emphasizer for what you're saying. You arrant fool, you arrant knave. You really are that thing, I'm going on a rant. You really are that thing that I'm calling you. So I remembered that, complete and holy. Cow. <laughs> well, obviously you've got the animal, but to be a bit cowed is to intimidate someone or to feel like you're, it's a bit like with the word cowardly, it's you're a bit cowed, you're a bit intimidated from doing something. Obviously it's not just the animal cow, it's to feel a bit cowed, to feel a bit intimidated, off put, to intimidate. Don't be cowed by the big vocabulary list. Turn into a deck of flashcards. That's a reference to Magush, I think. To intimidate. So if you if you cow someone, you're intimidating them. Or if they feel cowed, they feel intimidated. Okay, I'm gonna go a bit faster now. And let's try and finish this 50 with a few new words. Prosaic is the opposite of poetic. Something's poetic, it's full of imagery and maybe alliteration and rhyme, but something's prosaic, it's kind of boring, just full of text, full of prose. Dull, lacking imagination. Opposite of poetic. Vicissitudes, the ups and downs of life, the vicissitudes of life. The vicissitudes of his career included being sacked and winning an award, the ups and downs, changes in one circumstance, usually for the worse. So the ups and downs, but mainly focused on the downs, the vicissitudes. I guess it sounds a bit like vicious, 
a vicious change in circumstances usually is going to be a negative thing. Arrant, complete or wholly, fully. Supercilious, arrogant, feeling like you're above, like you're super, you're above everyone else, you're supercilious. Haughty, disdainful, looking down on others, you're super, super means above or better, you're supercilious. Penurious, I believe means poor, because penury is poverty. So penurious, I'm guessing, means poor. Lacking money, poor, miserly. A diatribe is a long rant. A very fancy word for that would be a, how to pronounce it, Jeremiad? <laughs> Jeremiad? It's, uh, again, similarly, a diatribe, like a long rant against something. A strong verbal attack against the person or institution, a diatribe. Diatribe, that's actually a great word. And I just want to prove my point by saying that a jeremiad is also similarly a long, I guess more mournful it looks like here. Complaining, but also being a bit mournful, a jeremiad, whereas a diatribe is more angry. Exegesis is an explanation of something, an interpretation of usually a text, the exegesis of the Bible, a critical explanation or analysis, especially of a text, studying something and analysing it critically, usually a book of some sort, exegesis. To beg. Obviously to beg means to ask for something. I'm guessing what definition are they looking for? Because there's the obvious one of beg, to, to plead for something. Begs the question, hmm, I wonder what they want. To assume something is true, okay, in a more advanced definition. Yeah, like I said, to beg the question. Meaning that you ask a question in which you assume something that hasn't been proven. If you assume something, you're begging the question. Quite hard to explain to a non-native speaker because it's it's idiomatic. It doesn't really sound like it makes sense. But to beg the question is like you're saying something where you're, you're already assuming something. And so you're begging the person that you're hearing to question that and be like, well, can you really assume that? But I wouldn't worry too much about that. I can't imagine the GRE testing that in context. Turpitude. Moral turpitude. Hmm... I think it's definitely an insult, and I think it reminds me of the word pit. It's kind of like a, a swamp. I can't quite put my finger on the definition. Depravity, a depraved act. Yeah, like a, like a pit, a swamp. It's just depraved. It's horrible. It's disgusting. I'm going to go for I didn't know because I didn't know the exact definition, but it means something really bad, like a, in the pit of hell, depraved. Malfeasance. Mal means bad. So malfeasance is a bad occurrence, doing something with the wrong motives. Misconduct, wrongdoing, usually by a public official interesting. So if you're in charge and you're the authority and you do some misconduct or corruption, that's malfeasance. Bad acting. Mal means bad. Saturnine. Ah, oh, that's a word I always, always forget. I literally have looked this up many, many times. I'm going to go with gloomy, but I'm not 100% sure. Ah, oh, brilliant. Gloomy. So again, they used to believe that the planets determined your mood. So Saturn was associated with being gloomy or sad. And that's what I thought I remembered, but I wasn't 100% sure. So to be associated with the planet Saturn was again like a humour, a bit like we saw earlier with choleric, meaning angry. But Saturnine is associated with being gloomy. Pariah is an outcast. You're banished out, you're ostracised. You are now an outcast. People don't talk to you, people don't speak to you. You could say someone who's outside cast out of their parish. I don't know if you know that word. It's like a local domain. If you're cast out of the parish, you're a pariah. That's how you could remember it. A jingoist. We have a few jingoists in the world at the moment. People who just rely on slogans. And they don't really believe anything. They're just a jingoist. Mm, 
Okay, it's a little bit different. I'm going to check this one because that's not quite what I said. Jingoist. Um, someone who's always thinks their country is right, a nationalist, is in favor of aggressive acts against other countries. Is that true? Also about slogan. A bellicose aggressive nationalist, a flag waver. Hmm, okay. So I would say I kind of got that wrong. I knew it was like a leader who relied on slogans, but I didn't quite knew it meant like being nationalistic and aggressive towards other countries. So I'm gonna put, I didn't know that word, so I'm tested again. To expunge is to remove. She was expunged from the party. His contributions were expunged from the record. It's wiped out, destroyed to eliminate completely, to be removed entirely, expunged. Wiped out is if you're wiping out with a sponge, expunge. Indigent, that's the word I got wrong earlier. It means poor, right? And that's one of the things I like about this app or this website, of course the link will be in the description, is that you can get a word wrong, say that you didn't know it and you'll be tested again. So it's forcing your brain to remember the definition. Indigent means poor, having very little. Alacrity, speed, attentiveness, responding quickly, good reflexes. You just do things quickly with great alacrity. Speed, urgency. An eager willingness to do something. Such alacrity, urgency. How might you remember that? Well, the critty at the end almost sounds a bit like critical, right? And if something's critical, you do it with eagerness, willingness, urgency, alacrity. Indigent, again, means poor. Insufferable. They're just so annoying. You suffer to hear them. They are insufferable. They're just annoying, off-putting. You don't want to be around them. They are insufferable intolerable so difficult to endure it's usually a cheeky insult oh your mother is just insufferable you just don't want to hang around them they just your ears suffer to hear them contentious means controversial one person contends one thing the other person contends another thing and that becomes contentious full of argument controversy debate likely to argue that issue is very contentious. Or you could even say a person. You are quite contentious, aren't you? Full of argument. Artless. Artless has two definitions. It can be innocent without art, without cunning, or just clumsy. You know, you, it doesn't have any art, it doesn't have any cunning, doesn't have any scheming, doesn't have any ulterior motive. It's just innocent, sometimes kind of meaning clumsy as well. So didn't really think it through, artless. Let's see which definition they've gone with, without cunning or deceit. So they've gone with more the innocent side of the definition, but you often hear it meaning, oh, that remark was just artless, kind of a bit clumsy. That's how I remember it. But it also just means innocent. Cherry, I remember this one because I remembered the mnemonic, right? It rhymes with, Wary. If you're cherry, you're wary. You don't really want to do something. You're cautious. You're kind of reluctant to do something. Untoward. Inappropriate. His behavior was untoward. You could think of toward being forward, it's like a good thing, and untoward, backward, that's a bad thing. Your behavior is just untoward, it's unacceptable. Unfavorable, inconvenient. So it's not a strong condemnation, but it's just, you know, that wasn't the right thing to do. Here they're emphasizing inconvenient, which is a part of the definition I didn't know. So untoward also just means inconvenient, a hassle, not helping us to go forwards towards our goal. Jingoist. Remember, I thought it meant someone who relies on slogans, but primarily it means an aggressive nationalist leader, someone even who wants to increase their territory and be aggressive towards other countries, a jingoist. And I wouldn't have remembered that unless they'd have tested me as Magoosh does, which is brilliant. Which is again why I'm so in favor of this app. Expansive. Think of the word expansion. It means going out into other things, expanding out. 
So an expansive discussion is one that covers many issues, it expands out from the simple topic into a much broader discussion, wide. Or an expansive car park is one that stretches out huge. So this definition, they're emphasizing how that means you're gonna maybe talk a lot in a conversation. You're communicative, you're being social. But it also has those other definitions, which means to expand out, to be large. But they're saying it's most found in conversation. An expansive individual who is someone who wants to talk a lot about many different topics. Imbibe is a funny one. It means to drink. I think many languages in Europe have bibe for drink, right? So to imbibe is to drink something. To drink or absorb as drinking. To hector is to lecture someone. Sounds a bit like lecture, right? To hector is to lecture someone angrily. Not quite like a diatribe or a jeremiad, but to hector someone is to maybe harass them. It's like a lecture where you're harassing them. To bully, to intimidate someone. Hectoring manner. So they're saying it's, it's less about talking, it could just be your behavior as well. If you're hectoring someone, you're harassing them. It doesn't always have to be verbally, it just can just be bullying them. Cherry, wary, cautious. Equivocate, it means you can't make up your mind. You keep seeing the different options as equivalent, so you can't make up your mind. Whereas the opposite of that would be to be unequivocal. That means you're determined and decisive. But to equivocate is to find everything kind of equal and equivalent, so you can't make up your mind, you're indecisive. To speak vaguely, usually with the intention to mislead or deceive. Okay, so they're emphasizing how it's to avoid making a decision and to avoid the thing you mean to say. So I'm actually gonna count that as a word I didn't fully appreciate the first time around. I thought it meant to be indecisive, but actually it's a bit more evil than that. It means to come across as indecisive, to, to be vague, but actually maybe in the back of your head you've already made your mind up. So you're trying to dodge the issue. You're trying to mislead people into not understanding your position. It's kind of a slightly nastier thing to do than to just be indecisive. You're coming across as indecisive, but actually you've made up your mind. So I'm just gonna equivocate and see what's what. To be deliberately ambiguous or unclear. So it's not you actually being ambiguous and unclear and indecisive, Actually, in the back of your head, you've made your mind up, but here you're misleading people. You're beating around the bush. You're prevaricating. I'm going to put that as I didn't know the word because I thought it was a bit more innocent than that. I thought to equivocate is to not make your mind up, but it's more like to come across as not making your mind up when actually you have made your mind up. So I'm going to say I didn't know this word. Arrant, complete or holy. Turpitude is like pit, depravity. It's a, a piece of behavior from the pit of hell. It's a depravity, moral turpitude. Apogee. I associate apogee with being like the epitome of something, the peak of something, the ultimate example of something, the highest point. Kind of similar to zenith. You know, I said nadir is the lowest point, zenith is the highest, and apogee is maybe another way of expressing zenith, the highest point of something, is it's praise. You are the apogee of politeness, usually associated with praising something, the apogee. Feckless means, I believe, like reckless or lazy. But which one of those two is it more about? Mm, let's find out. Lazy. I've just thought of the perfect way of knowing that feckless means lazy, right? To be feckless is to not give a F-E-C-K. Now don't sue me, I didn't say anything, I'm just saying that's a good way to remember it. To be feckless, to not give a F-E-C-K. To be lazy, irresponsible. Overweening, the overweening pride meant arrogant, didn't it? Arrogant, presumptuous. This is a great way to practice. Apostate, someone who leaves their religion you leave your religion, you're an apostate. You've left the home state, I guess. Your normal state of being in the religion is gone. You're an apostate. You've left. You're not an apostle, 
you're not a disciple, you don't follow the religion, you're an apostate. Someone who's abandoned a cause or a faith. To equivocate doesn't just mean to be indecisive, it means to come across as indecisive and vague, but actually you've got a plan in the back of your head, so you're misleading people. Got it. Jingoist, aggressive nationalist. Equivocate, we just said already. Overweening, again we said arrogant. Churlish, very similar to um, overweening you could say. Churlish is like ch almost childish, kind of it's an insult. You're churlish, just you speak back when you're told off maybe. Rebellious, churlish, kind of childlike. Lacking manners or refinement. And behaving a bit like a spoiled child. Churlish. Equivocate. We know. Turpitude from the pit. Depravity. We know. Overweening arrogant. We know. Cherry is wary. Indigent is poor. Overweening. Okay, it's really hammering home to check that you know what words you didn't know before which is good in a way. But I would say I know turpitude now with great certainty. I know cherry with great, great certainty. I know arrant with great certainty and equivocate. Exegesis is interpretation of text, which I knew. And to beg is not just to plead for something, but to beg the question, to reveal like a hidden assumption that forces the person listening to you to go, oh, but you're assuming this, aren't you? Again, wouldn't really be tested in the jury, that particular word. Jingoist could be, though, an aggressive nationalist, an artless, innocent, without cunning. An apostate, someone who's left their religion. And there we go. I've seen on the top, it says, awesome, I've just mastered all 50 words in the deck. So hopefully you have too, because that was the point of this video. I have learned, I would say, honestly speaking, maybe about six or seven words that I wasn't entirely sure on before. But now I would say I have mastered those words, words like equivocate, which before I kind of half knew, but now I fully know the definition. So this has been really helpful for me. I hope it's been helpful for you. It's been a lot of fun for me, and I can't wait to see you on the next vocab video.